Also, um, the X and circle buttons are switched around between Japanese and English versions. Again, I don't know why, but yeah. Prologue 3, A Girl at a Convent. Oh boy. Let's do this. Shaman. Receive my thoughts. Guardian Shaman. I guess it's Shaman instead of Innocent One. Young girl! Are you calling me? Where am I? I do not know this place, but I feel connected to it. Can you hear my thoughts, Guardian Shaman? Give me your name, then the contract of old will be made once more. I think I do like Guardian Shaman more than Innocent One. Who are you who is calling me? And I'm... I'm not a shaman. Hurry, shaman. Give me your name. Filgaia will be covered in darkness again. Shaman, give me your name. Oh, okay. My name is... So this is Cecilia, of course. You gotta appreciate the, the, the Cecilia of legend. Shaman Cecilia, release my power from the sealed library. Oh boy. Please wait, who are you? What do you mean by the sealed library? Cecilia, Cecilia, guardian shaman Cecilia. 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 Hey, Cecilia. You are so absent-minded. <laughs> like, oh, in this version, she's on the floor. Oh, what was I doing? Was that a dream? Holly, were you daydreaming again? You're almost 17. You shouldn't daydream so much. You are so strange sometimes. Yeah, I guess I am strange, but Holly, you're strange too. I mean, you're on the floor too, you know. Why are you down on your hands and knees like that? Because I'm checking on you, and I'm not the only one who's under the table. Oh, that's true. <laughs> right after the bell there was an earthquake. You really don't remember? Yes, I crawled under the desk. Uh, yeah. And I heard someone's voice. Whose voice was it? Calling me a shaman. Wasn't mine. Hey, are you daydreaming again? You don't have time for that. How soon until you return to Adlahide? Time goes by so quickly. You're turning 17, right? You should start telling everyone goodbye. Goodbye? If it was not a dream, whose voice was that? I don't know. What was the voice trying to tell me? And what is this sealed library? Thank you, Holly. It seems I don't have any time to waste. Ouch! Oh! <laughs> Oh, Cecilia, you're so absent-minded. Are you okay? You might need to use a heelberry after that. Alrighty then, so this is Curran Abbey, the second town of the game. There's actually no chests here. So, that's a thing. Cecilia! She, she starts in level 1. That's pretty low HP, but, but she's got good MP. You know, because that's just the way it goes. And such, and things, and such, and things. Let's see what we got going on here. Of course, we got all the items from the other prologues. She has no skills, because nobody does. She's in level one. So she starts off with two spells, fire and heal. Inflicts fire damage. And recovers HP proportional to magic. So that's cool. She actually starts with no force, which is kind of interesting. So, of course, she's the mage character. 
You actually can't change the orders of these, I don't think. That's kind of weird, but... But, yeah, but, yeah... Dun, dun. Okay. Let's see what's going on around here. We can run! Running's awesome. How you doing? I heard your head hit the table and it was so loud. Is your head okay? Let me look at it. Oh no, you've got a huge bump! Oh no! I'm worried about you. You were already pretty strange. I hope it doesn't get worse. That's oh, fine. You didn't forget to see Sister Mary and Master Angie, did you? I know they are always busy, but you should go see them at some point. Eh, maybe. Maybe not. Liaison board. To the person who took the lamp, please return it. <laughs> okay. Random. It's prohibited to use equipment outside of class hours. I guess that's magical equipment. Yeah, this is a magic school, if you didn't know. Pessimism is a feeling. Optimism is a decision. That's kind of true, really, if you think about it. There's a globe showing the location of stars and some related magic equipment. Hopefully it's not the sorcery globe. The telescope is inoperable since it's missing the eyepiece. Plus it's pointed at the wall, so that's not exactly doing a whole lot. Okay. Let's see what's going on around here. What is this nonsense? What is this? Kieran Abbey, a holy school where people respect manners, culture, belief, and honor. And we can also sneak around. Ha <laughs> ha All right. Bum, 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 bum. Does this do anything? Nah. The stone statue is standing quietly. Well, I would hope so. If it's being loud, that'd be kind of awkward, wouldn't it? Just throwing that out there. What do we got going on in here? How you doing? Bree? That earthquake was such a shock. At first I thought I was convulsing. And that's why everything was shaking. Then I realized that my cup on the table was shaking too. I was so surprised I almost screamed. That's too bad. Okay. We're in the library! Let's try and not get thrown out at this time. You know what I'm talking about? How you doing? It's Trish. Trish Stratus. Cecilia, do you mind if I tell you something? I was arranging the books and noticed that a book which should be here is missing. I'm, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm irritated since it does not look good to have only the first volume of a series. Don't get me wrong, it has nothing to do with me caring about how the story ends. Well, anyway, if you find the next volume somewhere, would you mind bringing it back? So this is the storybook side quest. Much like the one in Wild Arms 3, it's kind of the same deal. Which episode one? Huh. Okay. We get which episode one? Also, the teardrop is in your inventory. It it was a tool in the original game, but it, but in this game, it's actually an item. This secret stone passed down through females of the Adlahide family emits a mysterious blinking light. Also, the migrant seal is under party item. Increases migrant level. Which episode one? This is Phil Gaia's story. Chapter one. The title is Opening the Door. Yeah, yeah. Of course, much like in the original, once if you read them all to her, you'll all the books, click them all and read them all to her, you'll you'll get an X file key, so. Well that book, may I take a look at it? Sure. Thank you. I will read it to you now. If you get tired, let me know by pressing the start button. Oh boy. Chapter 1. Opening the door. The dull sound of my footsteps echoed off of the floor. I was all alone. 
I removed my helmet and shook my head. I was in the graveyard of the Pillar People. It was the best location for the experiment. Still, I was scared that I had brought the high-density energy crystal here. After removing my firearm, I sat on a half-broken stone bench. An experiment using an energy crystal as a catalyst? To power the space-time warp to 536 revolutions before. Was this a way to end the war? I rested on the stone and closed my eyes. The face of the girl that I killed three days ago floated before my eyes. What had a civilian been doing here? She had approached me and placed her hand in her pocket. I thought she was with the enemy, and so I had thrust my sword without hesitation. But she had been defenseless, no weapons on her at all. I sighed deeply and examined the communications device that had been lying next to the crystal. When I flipped the power switch on, the radio told me to pray. I bit my tongue and turned it off. For a moment, the green display illuminated the movement of insects. 536 revolutions ago. In those days, gods supposedly existed and prayers had purpose. But the gods had disappeared somewhere along the way, and now we spent our time fighting battles and holding our hands over our hearts in useless prayer. The gods we worshipped had disappeared. So why couldn't people stop praying? People were still looking for someone to help us and forgive our sins, but the gods didn't exist anymore. I rubbed the hilt of my sword and exhaled. I refused to pray. I stood up, but before I started roaming around the ruins, I paused to examine the energy crystal. Out in the corner of my eye, I noticed a cross-shaped star rise above the trees. Almost immediately, a blinding white flash jumped out of the crystal and engulfed my body. The world went white upon impact, and a strangled yell was forced from my throat. My internal organs felt as if they were being crushed. I tried to let go of the crystal. As the pain slowly faded, I felt like I was left floating in an inky black darkness. My lips trembled. My senses were locked in claustrophobic terror. What was happening? Was I dying? I almost went crazy at the utter blackness when an orange light engulfed my shoulders. The crystal was collapsing. It dissolved into small particles like a fine powder, which floated off into the deep black darkness. I calmed down a little. The crystal's sudden splintering seemed logical, and for some strange reason, I was sure this was all real and not a dream. I felt my body float off in the same direction that the lights were floating. I couldn't say I knew where I was going, but compared to staying where I was in the darkness, it seemed the better option. All I could do now was pray that I reached some place of safety. Pray? Me? I took a deep breath and exhaled through my nose. I devoted all of my thoughts to prayer, though I felt I could not expect salvation. And suddenly, I felt a surge of hope. I, who never believed in prayer. I could feel myself moving faster, though I couldn't actually sense my body. Had I been vaporized by the orange light, like the crystal? I struggled with the idea of having no body. Was I just a floating spirit? Thankfully, I lost consciousness. I could feel a slight warmth on my cheek when I regained consciousness. Sunshine? But it felt different. Suddenly, I could feel my body again. Even my ears were tingling, like they'd fallen asleep. I moved my numb fingers and tried to touch my cheek. I heard somebody gasp, then a slight ru rustling noise. When I opened my eyes, it felt like someone was continuously hitting my head. The first thing I saw was the warm orange light, then a bright stained glass window which scattered the mild sunshine, and then pale slender hands. I narrowed my eyes. The slender hands were blurry with orange light. Oh. The warm light twinkled and disappeared like magic. I blinked, look upward, looked upwards, and found eyes that were blue like the southern sea staring into my own. Do you feel any pain? Ruby red lips framed the question, lustrous hair, fringing her small pale face. No, no. My voice croaked out of a parched throat. She seemed around my own age, only 17 or so. Her face gave off a strange impression, a mix of per 
precautiousness and childlike naivety radiating equally. While I was wondering if I should have spoken to her more politely, my eyes darted around, trying to see everything. Her fingers were spotted with fragments of colorful light. I could feel the coldness of the stone building. The ceiling yawned high above me. A chapel? Color danced on the stained glass behind her. She looked at my eyes and said, Cain Canary, from the world without gods, I've been waiting for you. Her voice was low and gentle. I looked away and moistened my lips. I noticed that the crystal was gone. I could feel the sweat on my palms. Could it be? Someone sparked in my brain. Something sparked in my brain. The space-time experiment. Did it work? I realized she was still waiting for a response. Her head cocked to the side inquisitively. I swallowed, opened my mouth. Please tell me where this place is and what your name is. She smiled softly and nodded. This place is 536 revolutions before your world. A place still protected by gods. The laws of your world differ from those that rule our life. As she spoke, she combed my hair back, placed her hand on my forehead. This is the light of the God of Life, the magic which dwells in my blood. Her eyes closed and she chanted. At the same moment she finished, warm light engulfed me again. Magic? I whispered. The gods exist in this world? Yes, we cannot imagine a world where they do not exist. She smiled and her blue eyes looked over me. She reached out her hand to me. I did not understand her smile. Welcome to this period, Cain. My name is Lori. I am a rule keeper, and I serve the god of time and life. I took her hand in mine. I wondered how long I had lain on the ground. Before I could ask, she looked up, lifting her head, lifted her head slightly, and bit her tongue, as if she noticed something. You still need rest. The air was chilly like a winter morning. I felt a strange sensation I had never felt before. Lori looked down on me and smiled softly. It's okay. I will protect you. I... I was born for it. Lori stood up before I could ask her what she meant. Come with me. She rushed to the exit of the chapel and pushed open the thick wooden door. Because it looked very heavy. I went next to her to help. I noticed her body go rigid. What's the matter? As soon as I asked her, a white flashing light shined through the stained glass window. It's too early. Lori frowned and bit her lip as she turned around. Cain, come with me. I have to protect this world. I need your cooperation to do so. I need you to go to the Passover festival with me. It will be held in the capital ten days from now. Her eyes held mine with urgency, but people who would disturb it exist. What do you mean? Who are you? I asked for an explanation, but Lori was not listening to me. The explosion occurred at close range. I covered my head at once, and I tried to plant my feet, but I was thrown back inside the chapel. I groaned as I hit my hip against something. In my blurred view, I looked for Lori. Her movement switched smoothly from a defensive stance to a fighting one. I stood and drew my sword hurriedly. In the scattered rubble and dust, I could only hear mine and Lori's breath. We moved close together and looked around. There was no one around, but suddenly the hairs on the back of my neck bristled, warning me I was wrong. The mild early summer sunlight danced merrily on the plain wooden floor. But in the quiet room, something was out of place. Lori stood with her back to mine. I can't believe it. I slowly followed her view to the altar. Where nobody existed seconds ago, a silver-haired girl in black now stood. For some reason, her face sent shivers down my spine. Rule breaker. It's too early. She paid no attention to Lori. The beautiful girl smiled at me. But her smile was bloody and sinister, and all I could do was tremble. Oh, wow. Talk about a cliffhanger. Huh? What? Oh, okay, we'll stop here. These books are really good. We were just getting to the good part. So that's chapter one. 
It's kind of weird that you get the first book so early in this game. But that's how it goes. Alright, well, what do we got going on here? We got some books. Crest user. An expert able to, A pool expert. <laughs> able to understand a crest and use the power from it is called a crest sorcerer. If the expert is a female, she is called a crest sorceress. What about if they're a male? Then it, it just doesn't matter, I guess. Basic crest sorcery. Okay. The technique of constructing magic by combining two crests is known as crest sorcery. These crests enable users to cast magic without performing a large ceremony. It, it is the modern style of magic dynamics. Kurio. Is that the same one? Yeah. Of course it is. Anything going on here? I guess not. Bum, 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 bum. Elemental properties. Elemental properties classify the energy flow and characteristics of attack type magic as follows. Earth, water, fire, wind, ice, thunder, light, darkness. Eight property classes. The relations of those classes are earth, wind, water, th so earth is weak against wind, water is weak against thunder, fire is weak against ice, light is weak against darkness, so on and so forth. So when using wind against earth or ice against fire, expect better results. There is attack magic that is pure energy and doesn't belong to any class. These are known as non-elemental. Indeed. The challenge of magic. Don't be afraid of failure. If you construct magic by mistake, you can just disassemble it. The thing you should fear is clinging to magic you constructed. Searching for new power depending on the battle and the situation is best. Have style and try different magic. You gotta have style. You know what I'm talking about? De La Metallica! Like in the original. Preface, except you can read this one. Preface, this record... This records how alchemy was practiced during the period of, of the Great War. Many ancient techniques are considered forbidden territory in today's world. For example, planting life into metal. If an unskilled sorcerer gained this book, the world's natural order could be overturned. For that reason, I sealed this book. If you would like to release the seal, obtain the key of knowledge. Keep that in mind. Then the essence of this magic book will be revealed. So that book, De La Metallica, was actually in 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 Cecilia's prologue dungeon rather than here in Kieran Abbey, but you know. Guess they changed that for whatever reason. Recommended magic. When you don't have that many crest graphs, make sure one of them is for HP restoring magic. Where there is life, there is hope. You can find a way out of any difficulty by staying alive under any circumstances. There are many useful attack magic spells as well. We recommend learning fire magic, which is why you start with those two. So, you know. Fire elemental magic is the most popular of destructive magic and will often prove effective. It is useful against most elemental based creatures, except for light elemental monsters and undead monsters. Hmm. Okay. Let's head on in here. Looks like we're in a courtyard. We're in a courtyard! Carlton Sheet style, didn't you know? What do we got going on? Oh, okay. I see how it is. What do we got here? The stone statue is standing quietly. Yeah, we kind of know that. Got some benches. A statue of a holy woman, circled by the other statues as it is being guarded, faces west. Hmm. The well is so deep that you can't see the bottom. There is only the sweet smell of fresh water. Good times. Is this anything? I suppose not. Bum, 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 bum. 
think one, one, one of the barrels here has an item. Heal berry, there we go. That's good stuff. Ba -da 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 Anything else going on out here? No? Doesn't look like it. What is that? Oh, that's just a flower. That's just a flower thing in my jigger. Hey, leave me alone, man. Leave me alone, sir. So we want to head in here. 